For me, kayak fishing is simple. A boat, a paddle, a fishing rod, and unspoiled water. The fish are big. Chaos is beautiful. It's angling's addictive final frontier, and I'm hooked. I'm Drew Gregory, and this is Hooked on Wild Waters. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by Jackson Kayak, We Make Fun, Z-Man Lures, The Science and Art of Fishing, Smith Optics, Smith is Fishing. On today's episode, I'm so excited to be in West Georgia on a real small creek. This is really where I, I cut my teeth starting fishing. Small creeks are exciting to me because sometimes you explore them and there's just not much there. Other times you find a place you can catch a hundred fish, but they might be small. But then there's always this pot of gold you find every once in a while, a small creek that has some deep holes where you can catch giant fish. It's early fall right now, so the fish are starting to see the days are getting shorter, nights are getting cooler, and hopefully that's gonna trigger them to start feeding up heavy for the winter. There's a few things you have to be aware of when you fish small creeks. You know, you may have to struggle to get to access. Uh, you might go through briars and bushes and even down riprap uh, by a bridge. But remember to check the local laws in your particular state. Usually, there is a public right-of-way at every bridge you can't access. You just gotta stay very close to the bridge and stay on that public right-of-way. But I'm telling you right now, if people haven't been there before, it very well could be worth it. Well, I grew up wading in rivers and creeks with my dad and that's really what started my passion for river bassin and I've got Tim Perkins here I know he's done the same but honestly Tim what makes it special to me is it's so wild you gotta you know hack through brush you gotta climb over logs sometimes and get to these places but you know they've never seen a lure that's exactly wouldn't right. you agree I mean the best fishing's in these places that's exactly right you know this is just a passion of mine I've been on some of the biggest stages in in fishing but I keep getting drawn back to this and I, I love sharing my passion and this is just good old boy fishing. If your kayaks are not beat up and your paddle doesn't have scratches and scrapes and your rods and reels aren't just getting muddy and dirty and your clothes aren't dirty, you're not getting to wild waters. That's exactly right. All right, man, time to get on the water. Good luck, brother. We will have to see what this cold front does to the fish. Bluebird sky, windy cold front day. The cool thing about rivers and creeks, they're smaller. A lot of times, cold fronts and posts front conditions do not affect them the same way they'll affect the lake. Just another benefit to getting in wild waters. As soon as we get in the water, the creek is wide here and we, we see tons of wood. That's a good sign. Obviously bass love to hang around wood. Not so much rock in this section, but a lot of wood. I paddle my way upstream. I'm going to fish one side. Tim's going to take the other side. I'm doing a lot more power fishing and he's, he's kind of finesse fishing. And then I notice this just gorgeous blowdown. A bunch of corn was kind of piled up there, old corn from the fall. I power fish this blow down with a buzz bait, no bites. But this is one of those spots, you can just tell there has to be a fish there. It's worth working with a jig. So I pick up my jig and I skip underneath there, and sure enough, wham, fish on. Oh, there's one, there's one. He hit it right when I lifted it up. First fish here, Tim. When we just started, I'm 100 yards from the bridge. I already got one fish and maybe a clue to the day. I was swimming this cross-sized jig back you know, pretty quick after I kind of was working it slow and she came and smashed it. So maybe they're more aggressive than we think. It's really, really cold this morning. So we feel like the fish have to be lethargic, but truth is water takes a long time to warm up and it hasn't really gotten cold except for a few nights this, so far this fall. So I think they might be more aggressive. Let her go. You know, this, this creek is beautiful, but it's sad when you see, even as remote as we are right now, a soccer ball an oil can and a beer can floating up here. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that we have to all be aware of. If we drop something on the ground anywhere, it will end up in a small creek, a river. Um, that's what's cool about Georgia Power, though, and what they're doing and teaming up with folks to really help preserve and protect. And I decided to go into downtown Atlanta and talk to Jennifer Wynn so she can explain more about what Georgia Power is doing to protect these smaller streams and creeks that we love to call wild waters. Georgia Power has a long-standing commitment to environmental stewardship across the state. 
So that includes everything from our small streams in our urban areas where we um, get on the ground, boots on the ground projects and support for partnerships with uh, community groups to improve those streams all the way to keeping our lakes and the shorelines associated with all of our 17 lakes across the state uh, clean and safe for everyone in Georgia to enjoy. The Georgia Power Foundation recently announced a new water quality grant program. It's a statewide program where we're going to be funding projects that are specifically focusing on improving streams that may be impaired from an environmental standpoint. We are excited to get to partner with organizations across the state to get to uh, help with these on the ground projects that are going to make a measurable impact to our waters in the state. I've known Tim for a while now. His passion for small bodies water, rivers and creeks is unparalleled and he's a guy that's not afraid of hard work and getting his kayak a little bit dirty sometimes to get to these wild and unpressured fish. The perfect reason I wanted Tim to join me on this episode. Well, Tim is no stranger to fishing as a team. You know, he's done so well with Lance Cooley and river bass in tournaments in the past and today we treated this creek just like we were fishing as a team. You know, the inside bend of the river got a little sandy and shallow on my side, so I moved over ahead of Tim, and I'm using power fishing techniques, and he's following up with the soft plastic. It worked like a charm. I threw to the outside of this blowdown and with my buzz bait, and it sort of got the fish's attention, and he threw right in the middle of it with his Texas rig lizard, and he caught a nice, nice bass. Oh, fish on. There we go. Oh, good fish. That's a good fish, Tim. Good fish. Get them in, buddy. We knew there was one in the, the woods. See if you land them on this other too, side. Dude. You land them over here. Nice. Good fish. That's a nice fish. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Nice fish, dude. Right where you should have no, been. No, that's a large, dude. That's a good one. That's a good large. That's what we're looking for. No. Yeah. Hey. All Yay. right. I'm on the board, cuz. <laughs> Let me find hey, buddy. Hooked on wild waters, man. <laughs> That's awesome. I just threw a piece of soft plastic. I followed uh, Drew's buzz bait, which was a moving bait. And a lot of times in the fall, these fish are, are uh, after a cold front, it's actually a little bit lethargic. So I'm sure that buzz bait got him attentive. And then I threw that bait, that soft plastic, a little softer, uh, slower presentation and uh, she nabbed it. Every single spot in this creek looks so good, but of course there can't be a fish on every log. You gotta find the ones that look a little bit different. And in one particular spot, there was a very thick tree overhanging and it created a bunch of shade. Of course, bass love to ambush out of shade as well. So I cast my chatterbait underneath there as hard as I can and I crank it one time and it just budges. It's not a fish, I'm hung up. How frustrating is that? Your first cast and a good cast I made underneath that tree. But don't, don't fret because you still can catch a fish in that spot even though you get hung up. A lot of people make the mistake and go up in there and get their lure unhung, but really you could just pick up another rod, which is what I did, and I threw my buzz bait in there, and this three pound largemouth bass smashed my homemade buzz bait. Oh gosh, I smashed that fish. thing. Good fish. Yeah, that's a good one too. That's why you don't go in and get something when you're unhung. You wanna make sure you fish it first. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. I don't think it's quite the size of yours, but she's a good one. She smashed it. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Here she comes. Homemade buzz bait strikes again. They hit it on that buzz bait. Oh yeah. Oh wow. She smashed it. Good deal, man. Look at that. Pretty fish, man. Solid three and a half pounder, I'd say. All day, any day. That's right. Another solid fish. We're really getting into them. You know, the work it took to get in here, honestly, it was not that bad. You know what, Tim? 10, 15, 20 minutes of extra work to get into a place like this, and it's well worth it. You know, Tim's got a solid, nice fish already. What, like a five pounder? Yeah, and this is like a three pounder, so. Hey, it's looking good and we still have tons of water left. Who knows what we're gonna encounter upstream. Let her go. See you, buddy. She gone. It's pretty cool to think that I would not have caught that fish had I gone in there 
got my chatterbait and kind of spooked that whole area. So be sure to keep that in mind the next time you get hung up. Tim and I are about a mile upstream at this point and it's getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. And that's okay because there's gonna be small sections and they're gonna widen out again. But the problem is the narrower it gets, the more likely you're gonna find complete deadfalls that go over the entire creek. And that's what we ran into. Now, most people, when they see a deadfall, they're just gonna stop and just work their way back downstream and quit fishing. But that's the whole reason you have a kayak. They're lightweight, they're made to get into wild waters. And of course, you guys know what happens when you get into wild waters. So early on, I had success on the jig. But ever since then, I've been catching one of the buzz baits. So I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna keep hitting as many targets as I can and continue to parallel the banks and all the structure I see. Tim and I have had a really good day so far. We've caught good numbers of fish and even some big fish. But we're waiting for one more solid fish because we know they're in there. But unfortunately, daylight is fading. Time is running out. I get to this one spot and I see the push water for this shoal. And in the push water where the current speeds up, that's typically where they're gonna be. I throw in the back side of the blow down and just a few cranks in the reel and she smashes it. Bam, there she is. There Ooh. she is on the buzzer. I knew, I knew it. I knew they were this buzz bait, Tim. <laughs> Small water, look at the size of this thing. Jeez. Oh, come on, come on, come here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Skinny water fish. The work and effort it took to get here, that was worth it right there, buddy. Nobody else is doing this. No, this fish has never seen a bait, I promise you that. Well, we've definitely worked for it today, and it blows me away that fish this size, and bigger as we've already seen today, are in small bodies of water like this. It takes a little work, it takes a little effort, but it's well worth it. And honestly, it makes the adventure that much sweeter, the journey. And they're all the reasons we're hooked on wild waters. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by Power Pole Shallow Water Anchors, Swift, Silent, Secure, Tennessee Trailers, the only name to have behind you, Yak Attack, Rigging the Dream, Bending Branches, Pretty Smart Paddles, Orion Coolers, Never Lose Your Cool, 13 Fishing, Make Your Own Luck, Ray Marine, Specialists in Marine Electronics,